In this lecture, let's learn how we can delete a record from the database server by sending a delete request from our React application. Here, we are fetching the user records from this Firebase database and we are displaying it in this React application. Now, for each record, we also have this edit and delete button. In the last lecture, we implemented the functionality for this edit button. Now, what we want is when we click on this delete button, that particular record should be deleted from the database server. Let's see how we can implement this functionality. Let's go to VS Code and let's go to User Details component. If I scroll down, here you will see we have this delete button. On this delete button, let's first add this click event listener. And to that, let's assign a function. Let's call this function on delete user clicked. Let's go ahead and let's create this function. Now inside this function, we want to get the user which we want to delete as a parameter. So here, let's specify two parameters. First, the event parameter. So inside this event parameter, we will receive the click event object. And then let's also specify the user parameter. And here, where we are handling this click event, here instead of calling this function like this, let's go ahead and let's pass an arrow function. This function is going to receive the event object. And inside this arrow function, let's call this on delete user clicked function. And there, let's pass the event object and also this user object. All right. Now, what logic do we want to write inside this on delete user clicked function? Well, what we want is in the app component, we want to have a function which will be responsible for sending the delete request to the server. So just like we have functions for creating a user, fetching a user and editing a user, we also want to have a function to delete a user. So let's create a function. Let's call this function on delete user. And this function is going to receive the user object. And we are going to pass this function as a props to this user details component. So just like we are passing this on edit user function as a props, we also want to pass this on delete user as a props. And then from within this user details function, let's go ahead and let's call that function. So for that, we can say props dot on delete user. And to this on delete user, let's pass this user object. So these are all the changes which we need to do in user details component. Now let's go back to our app component. The first thing which I'm going to do inside this on delete user function is I'm going to log this user object, which we are receiving as the parameter. Let's save the changes here. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. Let's go to this console tab. Let's clear everything here and let's click on this delete button. So when I click on this delete button, that particular object has been logged in the console. And this user object also has this ID property. And using this ID property, we are going to send a delete request to the server and we want to delete that record where the ID matches this string value. Okay, so let's go back to VS Code. But before deleting the record, I also want to get a confirmation from the user whether he really wants to delete the record or not, or he has clicked the delete button by mistake. So for that, let's create a variable here. Let's call it delete. And to this, I'm going to assign this confirm function. And here we will ask user, do you really want to delete the record of, and then let's use user dot first name. Let's provide a space and then user dot last name. And here we have this error because this delete is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. So instead of calling it delete, let's simply call it del. And let's go to the web page now. And here we have an error and it says unexpected use of confirm. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use window object first. And on that, I'm going to use this confirm method. So basically this confirm is a JavaScript function on this window object. With that, let's go to the web page. And now whenever we will click on this delete button, First, it will ask for the confirmation. And here you see we have this message. You really want to delete the record of undefined undefined. So basically, 
here this user dot first name and user dot last name it is returning undefined let me click on this cancel button here and this object has been logged all right so here the first name has this n in caps and this last name has this n in caps now let's go to vs code and let's check what we have written okay so here we need to make this n in caps and here also this n should be in caps let's save the changes now let's go back to the web page let's try to delete this record one more time so now it says you really want to delete the record of john smith so now it is showing the proper message let's cancel this let's go back to vs code and here let's say do you okay now here if i click on this delete button again so it says do you really want to delete the record of john smith if i click cancel in that case this confirm function is going to return false but if i click on this ok button in that case it is going to return true so when i click on this ok button that means i really want to delete the record in that case this confirm function is going to return true okay so here we are going to check if del if its value is true then only we want to set a delete request to the server now let me comment this console.log statement for now and from here let's use this exios object on that let's use delete method so this delete method is used to send a delete request to the server and there let me go up and let me copy this url and let's use this url here inside this on delete user function and here instead of getting the id from this user to edit state we are having that id in this user object so i'm going to use this user object here which we are receiving as the parameter for this function so this user object also has this id property and we want to use that id property that id value now here with the delete request we need not to send any body now again this delete method is going to return a promise and if that promise is resolved that means if the record is deleted successfully in that case that response which we will receive that will be handled by this then method and this then method takes a callback function and this callback function receives the response okay let's go ahead and let's simply log that response in the console otherwise if the promise is rejected that means if something wrong has happened some error has occurred in that case we can handle that error using the catch method and this catch method also takes a callback function and this callback function receives the error object the error which has occurred and inside this catch method inside the callback function of this catch method we simply want to set the error message state and we want to set it to error dot message with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me click on this cancel button let me close this developer console here let's refresh the page let's try to delete this john smith record so let's click on this delete button here it is asking for confirmation if i click on this ok button and now when i go ahead and click on this get users button we should not have that john smith record as you can see it has been deleted and from the database also you can see that record has been deleted so earlier the first record was the record for john smith but now the first record is this mary king so this is how we can send a delete request to delete a record from the database server now if i click on this delete button and instead of clicking on this ok if i click cancel in that case that record will not get deleted so if i click on this get users button we should still get the five records that means that record was not deleted and that's why it's very important that you take a confirmation from the user before deleting the record in the database server okay now what we want is when we click on this delete button it should delete the record in the database server and it should fetch the remaining records from the database server automatically for that after we get the response let's go ahead and let's also call this fetch users function and in the last lecture we also made a mistake that we moved this fetch users function outside of this then block now here what is happening is this code when we are sending the post request this code will be executed asynchronously in the same way when we are sending the put request this code will be executed asynchronously so 
since these codes will be executed asynchronously when we are calling this fetch user here what will happen is fetch user will be called first before we receive the response and that's not what we want so that's why i have commented it here and i have moved it back in this then method which is handling the response returned by this exios.put and also in this then method which is handling the response returned by this exios.post and here also in this delete user we're doing the same thing so we are calling this fetch users function as soon as we have the response with this if i save the changes if i go back to the web page and if i try to delete a record so i'm going to delete this mark what record if i click on this delete button and if i click on this ok button you can see that record has been deleted and the remaining records has been automatically fetched so now we only have four records in the database server if i go to the firebase database here you can see that now we only have four records so in this lecture we learned how to delete a record from the database server by sending a delete request to the server this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day